The Euphrates has been the cradle of civilization in West Asia. The river has been the lifeline for millions in Iraq and Syria. And this site is estimated to be nearly three and a half thousand years old. He said the citing three consecutive years of low precipitation and reduced river flow. Since the Euphrates River is on its brink to becoming completely dry, many Christians are keeping a close check on its development. This is because the Euphrates River is mentioned in the Bible in connection with the fall of four angels after the river has completely dried up. However, very recently, a disturbing footage shows a location that made unusual sounds. It was reported that the location was on the Euphrates River and the sound came from under the ground that came out through a breach. The people who lived in the area believed that the voice was the voice of fallen angels that were imprisoned so that they could make a sound like they were asking for help. What does this mean for people all around the world? And is the prophecy that was written in the Bible coming true? Is it possible that these noises are being made by angels who have been cast down? In today's video, we investigate the mysterious sounds that were captured in a clip that has believers all around the world in a state of shock. Iraq is experiencing the worst drought it has seen in decades. Communities who rely on the Tigris and Euphrates River for their source of water have been left without the water they need to survive due to a lack of precipitation as well as poor management of their resources. In order to prevent the crops in the Kurdistan region of the country from drying up, the authorities in charge of the Mosul Dam Reservoir did some draining in the month of January. It turned out that the decision helped save more than just the crops. Archaeologists had only a few days to examine the area before the waters returned, but they were able to successfully map what they believed to have been a major city in the Mitanni Empire built 3,400 years ago. This ancient city emerged from the area that had been drained, and they had only a few days to do so. When the dam was constructed in the 1980s, Residents of the area were aware that the city had been in that location. However, the structures and artifacts that had survived the earthquake that had destroyed the city around 1350 BCE had never been thoroughly explored. According to a study that was published in 2018 by Smithsonian Magazine's Jason Daly at the time, certain portions of the metropolis initially emerged from the depths during a catastrophic drought. During that short period of time, researchers were able to investigate a long-lost palace that had gigantic walls that were approximately 6 feet thick and 22 feet high. Inside those walls, they found remains of wall paintings in vibrant shades of red and blue. However, the archaeologists did not have sufficient time to adequately map the settlement before the waters began to rise again. So when the drought struck again this year, a study team was formed in a matter of days to rush out to the site, according to a statement from the University of Tübingen. The University of Freiburg provided researchers with short notice financing to investigate as much of the city as possible before it was resubmerged. Archaeologists now have a better idea of what this ancient metropolis would have looked like as a result of the team's charting of multiple massive buildings and the discovery of hundreds of artifacts. An industrial complex, a fortification with wall and towers, and a multi-storey storage building were among the structures discovered. The enormous magazine building is of particular significance because enormous quantities of goods must have been stored in it, probably brought from all over the region, says Ivana Pulgis, an assistant professor of archaeology at the University of Freiburg, in a statement. The expedition's leader, Hassan Ahmed Qasim, chairman of the Kurdistan Archaeology Organization, says the excavation results show that the site was an important center in the Mitanni Empire. The team was impressed at how effectively several of the walls, which were composed of sun-dried mud and had been submerged for more than 40 years, had been kept. This is most likely because of the earthquake that destroyed the city. It transformed the upper parts of the walls into rubble, burying and protecting the city for ages. It's probable that the location is the ancient city of Zakiku, which was a significant center in the Mitanni Empire from 1500 to 1350 BCE. The empire covered slightly over 600 miles, ranging from the Zagros Mountains to the Mediterranean Sea, and was one of several kingdoms and republics created by the Indo-Iranians in Mesopotamia and Syria. 
However, very recently, a video emerged from this area that is both exceedingly strange and for many people extremely terrifying. Have the noises of the four fallen angels that are trapped beneath the Euphrates River been recorded? What about the sounds of the scorpion-like beast that will be unleashed from the earth when the bottomless pit in Revelation 9 is opened? A video that purports to show archaeologists working at the site of the dried up Euphrates River has just lately been made public. The video also claims to have caught the sounds of fallen angels or of monsters that are imprisoned within the bottomless pit. We must emphasize that these noises might simply be fabricated and this is far from proof, especially since we only have one video. We do however know that there are four angels that are chained at the Euphrates River and that once they are unleashed, they will murder one third of men with 200 million horsemen. This is something that we have been told in the Bible. What does the Bible say about these fallen angels? In Revelation 9, 13, 21, the following is said. 13. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. 14. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. 15. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. 16. The number of the mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000, I heard their number. 17. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. 18. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. 19. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. 20. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands, they did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. 21. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. These are the words of a voice that John hears emanating from the four horns of the golden altar, which is recounted in Exodus 27.2. This voice instructs the sixth angel with the trumpet to release the four angels imprisoned at the Euphrates River, the ancient border between Assyria and Israel. Revelation informs us once more that God is ultimately in charge of these occurrences, allowing or declaring each one. Evil is never allowed to run completely rampant in the end of times. Because they are described as bound, we know they are demonic beings. Demons are fallen angels who are often bound in chains of gloomy darkness, 2 Peter 2.4. God's good angels, like some of Satan's angels slash demons, are not chained but free. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places, Ephesians 6.12 says. The Euphrates Valley, where these four angels are imprisoned, has a long history of human wickedness. The first murder was presumably perpetrated near the Garden of Eden in the Euphrates region, Genesis 4.8. In that territory, the first fighting confederacy was formed, Genesis 14. Nimrod established his kingdom there, Genesis 10.8-12. Babylonian idolatry arose in the area and will be judged there, Zechariah 5, Revelation 18. Revelation 9, 13 to 21 provides further insight into the assault by the northern invader. Earlier in chapter 9, we learn of a swarm of demonic locusts rising from the bottomless pit. We are now told that there are 200 million strongly equipped cavalrymen whose horses have lion's heads and snake tails. Four angels stationed on the Euphrates River allow the evil army to cross the river. The locust swarm described previously may control or perhaps possess these 200 million cavalrymen. The annihilation of one third of humanity follows. The remainder of humanity, on the other hand, refuses to repent of their terrible deeds, idolatry, murders, sorcery, or sexual immorality. This northern army's invasion of Israel is also prophesied in Joel 2 and Ezekiel 38. 
The goal of punishment is to bring people to repentance, yet it mostly fails. As a result, we infer that the entire judgment depicts the spiritual horrors that torment the sinful in this life, and which serve as foretaste of their doom in the life to come. Sin typically brings unrest and trouble in its wake. Rarely, if ever, does it provide serenity and satisfaction. The stings of sin may be more severe because their effects are frequently unseen by the wider population. In summary, Revelation 9 describes a star falling from heaven to earth during the fifth trumpet judgment. Satan is this star, and he is granted the key to the bottomless pit. Using this key, Satan unleashes a plague of locust-like supernatural demons. They torture unbelievers for five months with such agony that people seek death in vain. They resemble fighting horses and they have a monarch named Apollyon, which means destroyer. John witnesses the release of four angels from the Euphrates River during the sixth trumpet judgment. Their release coincides with the breakout of a horde of 200 million demonic mounted troops who destroy one third of humanity. The survivors, on the other hand, refuse to leave their worship and repent of their terrible crimes. Do you believe the Bible's prophecies are coming true? Are these the voices of fallen angels? Tell us about it in the comments section below.